Hey, this is Matt Whitmer from Birdie Precision. In this video, we are going to be taking a hands-on look at some of the new Honeywell Optimizer Advanced uh, devices. So on my demo panel here, I've got an Optimizer Advanced controller itself. Uh, the HMI for the controller is plugged in as well. And then I have a 16 UIO IO module um, all connected in line to each other using the touch flakes on the side. So let's uh, jump in. I'm going to move the camera around so you can take a peek and we'll run through the physical um, details of all of these devices. All right, so we're over at the panel now and we've got three devices. As I mentioned, middle, we've got our optimizer advanced. Then we've got our HMI and we've got a 16 UIO module here on the right. Start with the Optimizer Advanced. I've got the uh, covers here on the uh, terminal blocks and the connections. Um, one thing that I have noticed in playing with these things is if you're picking it off your desk or something like that, don't pick it up from uh, these covers because they will pop off and you won't be able to pick up your device. So just uh, pick up from the top here, or the actual bottoms of the device itself. This goes for the UIO stuff as well. Um, so first thing that you see on the outside of the device is this uh, ring LED. This changes colors based on your uh, boot up process, kind of like the 9000 does. So it starts off as red, and then as you uh, have your platform come up, it'll turn yellow. And then once you're fully booted up and ready to go, it will be green. Then we've got our LEDs for our RS-485. This controller was uh, configured and is configured right now, the station in it. Uh, to use all three 485 um, ports. So that's why we've got red. As you can see, there's nothing connected to those ports right now. So that's what that red is indicating for me. Um, if it was green, obviously that would mean you're good and you're communicating to devices. Um, we've got a uh, error light here next to that. We've got a, an HMI light that lets you know that you've got communications between the controller and your HMI. Uh, then we've got our connections for our flake ports on the side here. Um, this is indicating that we're talking 45 to our I.O. module. Um, the flake ports actually have the ability to do 45 or T1L. Right now, um, only the 45 is used for any modules, basically. Uh, T1L is kind of like a future thing, um, but it is cool that it has there. You'll notice on the those flake ports, um, I'll try to get a, a B-roll shot of this. Um, on the, the You have two sets of flake ports, top and then bottom. The top ones are power, and then the bottom ones, uh, there's two for 485, and then there's two for the T1L as well. So that's the basic stuff that you see with everything covered up. Um, but if you flip down this Honeywell logo, you've got your USB port for debugging and such, and then you've got a factory reset button here. Um, there is a specific procedure that you need to use with that reset button, so I don't think you have to be too worried about this getting hit by accident or something like that to and uh, your device going back to factory resets. But as always, like when this stuff is in a panel, you obviously want it to be kept in a secure place, locked panel if you can, locked room if you can, that kind of thing. So that is the basics on the front. Let's pop off these uh, covers. We can see at the top we've got three RS-45 ports on this particular model that I'm using, our power. And then on the bottom, we've got uh, our two Ethernet adapters as they come into the uh, controller itself. But then our uh, ports one, two, and three on that second adapter are switched. And we get some basic settings that we can set for those ports within our, uh, within our station. Uh, that configuration can be done from there. So that is the Optimizer Advanced Controller itself. So now let's jump over to the HMI. Um, as you can see right now, I'm in the home screen for the HMI and I'm actually signed in. Um, it's just a numeric password that you would use to get into an admin uh, account to be able to make changes, change set points, that kind of thing. Um, so out of the box you have these um, seven different options. Uh, from the display, a fast access list, 
And what that is is it allows you to set uh, specific lists that have specific points in them that you want to be able to access uh, quickly. So in my case, I've got this uh, test list that has a few points in it. And um, most of these points are actually coming in through backend, which, as you can see, isn't hooked up because we were uh, bench testing this uh, before with some 485 uh, devices or backnet devices. Um, so those points show up as down. But I know that this set point at the top um, is something that I can use because it's just a, a regular old Niagara point. And right now it has a manual set point that was put in from the display itself. That's why it's showing in manual. Um, the display, when you make a change on it, it basically is going to override the point. Um, and then you have the ability to go back to auto and then it'll roll back to the previous, um, set fallback default, uh, value that you had on that point. Um, another thing that's worth noting is that the way that the point names show up in here is configurable from within your station too. It's uh, done through B format. So you can see that we've got like uh, just a display name and then a parent uh, dot uh, display name uh, showing up for those point names in this particular use case. But since it's B format, typical Niagara stuff, you can do whatever you want there. I'll go back again and we can look at uh, our alarms. This is kind of um, as you would expect. It shows you um, uh, it shows you the alarms that you have currently, um, things that aren't acknowledged, that kind of thing, exactly as you would expect from uh, this kind of thing. And you can acknowledge from here as well. I'll go back again. Then we've got our data point list. Now this is configurable from within Niagara 2. Um, you can control what kind of points you want to show up on this list. Right now I basically have it set to show all control points. So there's a, there's a lot of points that are going to show up on here. And with the display you can do the typical um, scrolling action. Uh, it's just that you have to be quick in order for it to register it. Uh, you scrolling to the next page. So uh, tap in the middle and swipe up quickly. And you can see that I'm going through um, each of these pages with uh, our points. And then I can, like we did in the other uh, page, can tap into the point and uh, see the data and whatnot on it and make changes if you need to. So we'll go back. I can also see points that I have in manual currently. And you can see that um, this binary output was set from a handoff auto. Um, on the I.O. module, actually, you can see it here. Uh, this D.O. showing uh, the little hand means that it's in manual. We'll, we'll get to that in a second. But you can see those from this display as well. Then we've got what they call time programs, basically your schedules. Day of, days of the week, you can pop in, edit these uh, with the values that you want for specific times as you need to. So that's uh, schedules or time programs, as they call it. Oops. And then we've got some setting things that we can make from here just on the display itself. Uh, how quickly you want it to log out, that kind of thing. And then the last one is actually a super helpful one um, for just normal use cases. And it gives you just some basic information about your station and the uh, optimizer advanced itself right on the display without it, you having to like dig through Niagara for this kind of information. It's right there for you. Um, so if I scroll down, you can see your Niagara version, where your IP addresses are, and your and I forgot to mention your host ID for the uh, optimizer advanced as well. So super handy information that. Um, you'll likely run into a need at some point uh, for. So we'll go back out of that. And that is the HMI display. Last piece, we'll go over to the 16 UIO. Um, and I'll pop off the covers. So uh, we have our normal um, terminal blocks on these. They're kind of nice because they're all split up as... Um, 
as they are for each uh, I.O. And they're numbered as well so that you could pop it off, make uh, your connections as you need to, pop them back in and know exactly where the individual terminal block is supposed to be. We have these dip switches here at the top and the bottom. Uh, protocol dip switches right now uh, for future use, not use uh, at all. And then on the bottom we have our address. This is going to be where you set the address for this particular uh, I.O. module. And then in Niagara you'll obviously tell it what the uh, address is for that I.O. module to make sure that your connection is good. So now we get to the display on this guy. So uh, you can see on this one um, I've got a I've got five of the IOs configured as um, analog inputs, uh, two of which I've just got little thermistors on uh, to read some values for me. The last three are not connected, and it's and it's yelling about that. It's getting an invalid value, and it knows it should be getting a value. So it's basically throwing an alarm based on that. And then for the last one, this is set up as a DO. And it's got the little hand, meaning that it was manually set. And if we t click in on the uh, scroll wheel, I can get into the um, configuration or the, the actual control of that output. And uh, we can see that it's on off right now. If I hit this little auto button, oops, timed out. If I hit the auto button here in the bottom right, it's a little bit difficult to see on the camera, but there's a button right here underneath the uh, scroll wheel. If I hit that, it will go back into auto. And then if I hit the middle button again on the wheel, it will go back out. And then now we can see that we just see what the status of that output is. We're off, but we're not in hand anymore. So that's a general overview of these three optimizer advanced devices. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully that was informative for you. If you haven't already, like and subscribe. If you have any questions about these devices or anything Optimizer Advanced or anything you'd like to see with the Optimizer Advanced devices, um, leave those down in the comments below. We have a bunch of other videos coming out specifically around the Optimizer Advanced because there's so much involved, so much that they can do. Um, from the software and from the hardware side. So uh, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.